Hello everybody. I'm just receiving Sony TCK 909ES service. This will be the first turn on. Okay, it's on. Let's open the door. Here is a compartment. Head is in perfect shape. Capstance runs. So I believe it would be just a cleanup, lubrication, service, tuning everything, maybe upgrading capacitors. Uh, so far it looks nice. Let's, let's try to run the tape. Uh, let me see, maybe some tape here. Fast forward. Rewind works. I won't play back works. All right. So it's really in a good shape. Let me see what I can do with it. See you in the next part. Hey guys, and here I'm continuing disassembly of this Sony 909 deck. Uh, I mentioned that it's the same model as in Japan 222 ESJ. So, cups here still looks good, but I will replace just due to an age because they may start leaking in any moment. Also, I mentioned that this deck was serviced before and has extremely thick belt. It's very thick, much more thick than like uh, I'm usually using i'm not sure if it's good for our own flutter really it's not stretching it's so sick um now we'll install the one i i trust so i'm about to continue disassembling uh the heads here you may see appear to be in a pretty good shape no significant wear. I will like lubricate tip transport and then we will measure and see how this head perform. Tune it up and like uh, see if we would do any additional actions with this deck. Let me see, let me continue work. See you soon. Interesting, as soon as I pull it, this, I see there is no wires and someone already removed the backlight. So, I wonder if this deck has like very low wear and almost no use. I'm not sure why. <laughs> What's been wrong with the older light? Uh, continue disassembling. It's pretty interesting. Who did it and who was here? Moving on. And here I continue to assembly. I decided to lubricate the top bearings uh, on this real motor and common motor to make sure that they would not be suddenly screaming. It's like I am already did show a couple times like uh, Sony Dex can make a very loud, unpleasant sound with real motors when they uh, bearings get dried so it's it's really unpleasant like once i was thinking like uh deck don't have any any speakers but it's at the same time screaming loud so, <laughs> so i hope with this deck we would not experience in that really i mentioned that wear is very low i'm not sure who was like opening it before i see non-original belts this one is still good, but it's a round belt, an originally square belt. And this one is, is so thick, i never seen like that thick belt in Sony decks. I continue lubricating assembling season. And uh, here, guys, I was continue checking all parts, and I'm not sure if you see something unusual, but I do. 
I see that the metal switch assembled incorrectly. It will be always closed. And this means it would never record metal tapes. It was always sync or not metal, it's chrome, chrome switch closed. So it would never record chrome tapes. Metal is here together with the tape sensor. And this one is a chrome switch, 70 microseconds. That's the issue. Okay, good to find it now, then later. And I will also use deoxid. So this uh, contact pairs will work smoothly. Again, I check, check yourself. So it's always closed. It assembled improperly. Someone did a poor job. See you soon. And here guys, I'm disassemble it, clean it, lubricate the gears again, put everything back, and I'm ready to close the second piece. So make sure that uh, when you're assembling, these marks uh, stay on the same line. And this marks this line here should point to this lever. Okay, I hope you can see it. This means that this pin, which you see right here, will go into this position and encoder will work properly. See you soon. And here guys, two parts assembled together. Okay, couple things. Uh, first of all, you see the pin right there, and it's in between encoder cheeks, right in the middle. Next part, when you're assembling, uh, the micro switch, which uh, operates by this white gear, uh, please push the switch in, so it uh, would be able to sit properly, otherwise you may break it. And the last part, I replace it belt with a square one because when I tried to install back this guy, it appeared to be long and was not sitting on the two pins which are, are made to put belts on while we will be putting the second board in. And then we, like, we just like uh, throw it back on the pulley. See, this was too long, unfortunately. I was not able to fix it there. I'm not sure how these guys assembled before me, but I'm doing my work well. Okay, right, moving on. See you soon. Okay, guys. And here is the old capacitors removed and new capacitors installed. So you may check quality. Looks everything good. Now I will continue assembling and it should be done pretty soon. See you. Bye bye. Okay, here I'm assembled. So you see, Capstan's rolling. What I don't like, you see, this free right right here. It's too much. It should be 0 0.3 millimeter. To adjust it, we just need to push a little bit this plastic pin. But don't push, don't make it too hard, okay? So let me do it and I will show you how it will result. Okay, now when it's adjusted, it has a very minimum, like 0 0.3 millimeter, maybe half millimeter movements, okay? And now when you see the belt is rolling, it's always will be rolling on the same position. And what's more important, the shaft here always will be rolling on the same position and face will be consistent. All right. See you. Hey guys, and here I'm assembled tape transports. Looks like everything works smoothly. Rewind, pass forward, playback. All right. That I don't like. That's uh, frequency sweep tape. Let me see what we have here. Okay, so phase, phase is off, significantly off. Let me tune up the phase and then let's go from there.
Now we have it in face. It was significantly off. And now we have uh, perfect levels. So you see, it's about one decibel on the left channel and right channel keeps pretty well. Very, very good results. So heads are in very good shape on this deck. Next, let's see uh, higher frequencies from my other tape. So as I told you, so I've seen that heads wear is very low. Let me see how different tape will perform. Uh, I, that's, I believe somewhere around 18 kilogers. Yes, it's 18 kilogers. You see everything is in phase and it should be minus 20, uh, minus 5 Sony level, minus 15 and minus 5 on the level recorded because 18 and 20 I cannot record. It keeps very, very, very well. So I'm really jealous to the owner of this deck. And now it's 20 kilogers and there are no loss on 20 kilogers. Wow. I'm really jealous. It's a perfect hat. So <laughs> this deck is, is very, 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 very good. Okay, so mechanical I will fix it. You see how stable the face, you see how stable the speed, because you see the right side it doesn't doesn't move. So that means that face and speed are very, very stable. I would measure when I, I need to bring computer, but my my feeling this is very low. It's about 0 0.025%. It's very cool results. We have level, we have 20 kilohertz playing with a perfect level. So it's minus 15 decibel recorded and it's minus 15 decibel played. Wow. Very same. And now it should be minus 10. Yeah, level's a little bit off. That's one decibel on the left channel. That's it. Good. Good, let me tune it and let me see what else I will do with this deck. Because owner was jealous, was looking if to replace capacitors. And in this deck I see I see cheaper cheaper capacitors. Series. I believe these are 22 microfarads. This sort of looks like 22. So on. And this deck has more, more capacitors because it has Dolby. Yes. Why? Right. Let me see, let me talk to owner. I'm pretty happy with the results achieved. It's a very cool deck. See you. Bye bye. Okay, guys, now I'm installing the level tape, and you see Dolby level is off. So we have to set it to minus six decibel make it proper so right channel here and left channel right here so probably because azimuth was off that's where guys has been tuning with uh, different tapes and it make levels off so now we have a proper level so next i will be <laughs> do a recording test to see how well the deck can record let's see it together so i have 400 gears playing uh, tape source tape source here whoa one channel is off uh, really you see one channel doesn't work uh, No, it's not, not contact issue. Uh, okay. I need to use oscilloscope to see where is the loss of the signal. 
I see that it's 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 too old. Really. Uh what we have we done? I don't see really switch. Maybe forty city six tape source where you are. Yes, you see, tape source is, is not really, I don't hear a clicking sound, this is Dolby HX Pro, okay, I need to check schematics to see how they make the switch, I believe something wrong, okay, let me see, see soon. Hey guys, and uh, here I continue my investigation. So I'm already checking that on the input, as you may see on the oscilloscope, we have signal on both channels. Then it goes to the record volume port and balance, and then goes back to the Dolby chip here, uh, as you may see on the oscilloscope. So it's uh, one channel, and this I'm using DAC volume record volume to change levels and that's the other channel okay, so you see both channels are guess to the Dolby chip uh, so this is the record part let me see if it's oh, now I have both signals Really? And what's happened? No, nothing here, nothing here. Hey, it just works now. Interesting. Aha, uh -huh, here. It was a di direct switch, which was causing problems. Now I can use balance, it works. And with direct switch here, I cannot use balance. So now it works, now both channels are there. Oh yeah, interesting. Just check all wires for the case, if something will be disconnecting, no. Okay, it works now. So the problem was in this switch direct. When I was clicking it, it was very unstable. First couple of times. Now you see, it works. Pretty interesting results. Uh, okay, let's do direct and let's try record something. So let me set level. It's not even between left right channel uh, by one decibel. So here I'm changing a little bit. Yeah, okay, done. And on the indicator, it's still a little bit okay. But here it was just 0 0.1 decibel. Now it's even. Let's try records. What we will see here source tape. Okay, level is there. So 400 gears is, is good. So maybe about half decibel, maybe less difference on the left channel let me see and adjust recording levels if it's, it's right here yeah I guess I was right so again source tape source tape everything looks good on 400 gears now let's go to minus 20 decibel level and on minus 20 the balance 
works the opposite way. <laughs> Interesting. Fine, we have minus 20, minus 20 on the deck here. Let me use oscilloscope. Oh yeah. So it's 400 hertz. And now let's check bias. I will be changing frequency. I'm not sure if you can see it, but I will do my best. So, okay, one kilohertz, no change. Two, three, four. About one decibel higher. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten kilohertz. Okay, bias on the right channel a little bit different. 11, 12, 13, 15, keeps pretty well. So let's go 10 and set bias on the right channel. Uh, bias right here. Why? Because it was one and a half decibel difference. Now it's even. And now I will check whether 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, no drop, zero drop, 16, 17, 18. Okay, on 18 we have minus 2 decibel on type 1 tape. Pretty good results for this deck. Now let's install type 2 tape. Okay, it shows chrome on the indicator. That's good. Now let's me go back to the one kilohertz. Tape. Okay. This tape has a little bit higher response, about one decibel comparing to the type one. Going two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, no change, fully linear. 11, 12, 13, minus half decibel, 14, 15, 16, 17, minus 1 decibel, 18, 20, or oh, 19, 20, okay, minus 1 and a half decibel, 21, 21 minus 3 decibel, okay, it does pretty perfect job. As you may see. Okay, chrome tape is good uh, and even between two channels and works perfectly. Now TDK MA. Let me see what you will get on this tape. Okay, source tape. No difference. Very, very, very good on one kilohertz. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, plus half decibel, 8, 9, 10, 11, plus 1 decibel, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. You see how good the face on this tape? It still keeps plus 1 decibel, 21, 22. 23, return back to the level, 24 minus 2 decibel, 25 minus 4, 4. You may be jealous, I am jealous already. This deck is just performs perfectly, so no complaints. Uh, I believe that would be it. Let me check again that levels no more change. No scratch. Let me connect my headphones to listen.
not no scratch good spots and you've seen like I just fix it playback level and like uh, one decibel on the left channel on the bias maybe two decibels that's it everything else works really really well okay good so now i will have to measure one flutter and we should be good to go unless owner will request to replace capacitors so you've seen it was not too complex to fix this deck so if you will meet one it would be great as I told you, like 909 ES, it's the same model, like Japanese 222 ESJ. I believe schematic is a little bit different than the previous generation decks. I still see the same coil set in the record amplifier. So probably it's exactly the same as in previous generations but uh, including this Dolby S parts we have more capacitors, more switchers and I still need your, I need to open schematic and see what is the uh, source tape switch I just don't see it here usually it's 4066 but I don't see anyone okay See you in my next purse. Bye-bye. And here, guys, I'm checking wow and flutter. So you may see the speed is 2995. So it's pretty fine because uh, the tape has been recorded on the Kamichi Dragon, which is about four gears higher. Then, and you see wow and flutter, it's around 0 0.04. I, I'm happy with the results. So next, let me set up recording environment and we will check uh, recording charts. See you soon. And here, guys, I'm set type one tape. You see, it's normal. Minus 20 decibel, we're recording 400 gears. So it's a source and it's a tape, no difference. Okay, now let's go higher. So one kilohertz, three kilohertz, you see about 0 0.8 decibel. Uh, here is a source and tape, a little bit brighter response, 0 0.2 decibel. So five, six, plus one decibel but it's a source and tape is the same uh, 10 kilohertz source tape the same 12 15 kilohertz source tape minus 0 0.2 decibel drop and 18 it goes minus 2 decibel to the level okay now let's see the charts so minus 20 decibel white noise it's confirms pretty well it's flat to 16 kilohertz starting drop and like minus 2 decibel on 18 kilohertz minus 4 on 20 type 1 tape okay source tape Okay, Dolby B. A little bit sloping. Dolby C. 
Nej, då objes. Pretty close. Now let's let's go to minus six decibel. And no Dolby slope. Dolby B. Dolby C. Dolby C does a great job. You see, it's pulled up, up to sixteen kilohertz. And Dolby S. Hi. Dolby C like on this deck I like the most. So it will be sounding pretty well. Okay, so let me make a couple pictures for Olnir and I will set up a chrome tape and metal tape. See you soon. And here guys I am installed chrome tape. And you may see it right here. Pre recording tape plane and it's flat beyond 20 kilohertz so source and tape you see just a little difference like half decibel between left right channel above 12 kilohertz but it's pretty minor good chrome tape works well and the metal tape this properly shows metal. Let's check the level. Okay. Source tape. Let me put it back. Okay. Now source tape. Good. And what we have here? TDKMA, a little bit brighter, between 5 and 12 kilohertz. May adjust bias on the front panel a little bit to bring it down. Uh, down. Why? Right, like that. You see, we can adjust as much as we need. Uh, pretty good results. So it's source and it's tape. TDK May. Nice. See you in my next parts. Okay, guys, and here I just completed recapping of this deck by request of owner. I replaced it all capacitors sitting on audio pass with removing stacked capacitors, replaced them with one bipolar. So I just checked it levels. I didn't touch anything levels there. Uh, frequency response is there for playback, and now I'm doing recording. And on recording, here is uh, Normal tape, it's a source, and it's a tape. This gets lower only after 17, 18 kilohertz. So no changes at all, no levels, no bias. I didn't touch anything. Everything is just perfect. And you see left, right channels, very balanced now on the lower frequencies as well. Now let's see. Other tape types, let's see, chrome tape, okay, source tape, source, let me see levels, tape, uh -huh, we need to reduce level on the front panel a little bit, so source tape equal. And now here, the tape, source, and tape. Wow, it just no difference at all. Okay, and now metal tape. Checking up levels. Levels there, frequency response, and it's tape. No, it's source, and it's tape. I believe levels we need to yeah get back the port on the front panel. Okay, here perfect. Nice response with a bright. 
15 kilogertz, let me see, 10, 10 kilogertz for it. So, source tape. You see, this tape is bright. I will reduce bias on, add bias on the front panel. Okay. And now it should be good. Yes. So, source and tape. Metal tape, no difference. Perfect. So, results are there. Now I will test, tune, and close this deck. And I will record some music for you as well on this deck. See you soon. Bye bye.